Josh, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. So we're gonna address a very important topic here. We wanna find out if you are an ass or an ass not. And I'm serious because if you were to look at yourself in the mirror and be serious with yourself and, and honest, would you be someone who has your butt sticking way out and therefore an ass or are you sort of an ass not where everything is tucked underneath? I gotta admit, I'm a little bit of an ass not. And it's because of the position of our pelvis. And I've covered this in a, in a video on anterior pelvic tilt, which is a very common problem. If you haven't seen it, you gotta watch that video right here. It will tell you a lot about what to do to correct that. However, hamstrings are going to be tight in people that have anterior pelvic tilt or posterior pelvic tilt. Asses or ass knots, and we have to figure out a way to address that hamstring tightness, or do we? Because in that video I said, you're going to likely have tight hamstrings if you have an anterior pelvic tilt, but it's not something you want to address. Matter of fact, you want to do the direct opposite. You want to continue to strengthen them and not stretch them. So first of all, how would you tell whether you have an anterior or posterior pelvic tilt? Most of all, you want to look in the mirror, like I said. So if you were to look and just lift your shirt and look here, you want to focus on the waistline. So whatever you're wearing, your shorts or your pants, what position is the waistline? You're, it's normal to have a little bit of a downward tilt to it, a little bit, about three or four degrees. If you have this severe downward tilt, then you're dealing with that anterior pelvic tilt position here, and that's actually not a good thing to have. I know it looks better, but it's not a good thing to have. It's an adaptive shortening that you want to correct. At the same time, if you have a posterior pelvic tilt, you're going to likely see a level line here of the pants, or worse, it could even be tucked under so it starts to tilt up at the top. The second thing you can do is do an excursion test. How much room do you get? So if, let's say I am an anterior tilter. If I tried to go into more anterior tilt, so in other words, try to tip my pelvis down, I would only be able to get a few degrees because I'm already anteriorly tilted. I don't have that much motion left to go in that direction. But if you asked an anterior tilter to go posterior tilt, look what happens. I've got all that extra room because I had a lot left in that direction. Same thing, if I'm already a posterior tilter and you tell me to tilt and tuck my butt under, I'm not going to be able to get much further because I'm already there. That's where I walk around. I had to be able anterior tilt, I can probably get a lot more. Of course it would feel tight, but it's something I could actually move in. So do that test and figure out what you are. But now when you come over here, do you want to stretch or not stretch? Well think about what's happening. Again, I said tight hamstrings regardless of whether you were anterior or posterior. If you are anterior, look what's happening. Your hamstrings are attaching from the back here of your pelvis down to your knee, to the outside of your knee or behind your knee. They actually cross the knee. If my pelvis was anteriorly tilted and pushing in this direction, what's happening here to the hamstrings at their origin? They're getting longer, right? Because as this is tilting forward, it's coming up and over and it's causing my hamstrings to be tight. But guess what? The hamstring tightness is not causing this anterior tilt. The hamstrings are being stretched because of the anterior tilt. So the tight hip flexors on the other side are pulling this down this way that's making the hamstrings feel tight. But you wouldn't want to stretch these because all that's going to do is let the, the hip flexors on the front side do more damage, pull you more into anterior tilt and cause the problem to become worse. What you'd want to do is relieve the hip flexors, which is what I made that video about, that will show you then how to reset the pelvis back, guess what happens? All of a sudden all this extra stretch goes back down nice and there's no more tension on the hamstrings. On the other side though, if you're a posterior pelvic tilter, you got problems. You've got really tight hamstrings because what's happening is they're pulling down from here and we're pulling down more which is going to take our pelvis down into this posterior pelvic tilt, that no ass look where it's going to tuck under, underneath here. Your main problem is going to be tight hamstrings and guess what else? Because it crosses the knee here, it's going to shift the focus, I'll show you right here, of your body to do this. I tuck under, I start leaning a little bit more forward, my weight is going through my toes, my toes are act or, you know, by pushing through my toes, what's active as well, my calves, I start getting shortening in my calves and my Achilles. So now I can't even get into dorsiflexion at my feet here because my calves are tight. So you want to figure out a way to stretch your calves at the same time that you're stretching your hamstrings at the same time that you're not allowing yourself to be in posterior tilt. You gotta go out of that. So how can we do that? Well, we could do what I'm showing you here. We can get our foot up against the uh, anything, something that allows me to have elevation here. And then the next thing I can do is I wanna get my knee straight, obviously. Okay, so I'm getting stretched here back through the hamstring and then through back through the calves. 
and then I internally tilt this way. So now the, the big key is I put one foot back, which allows me to tilt more this way. You can see I can go more into anterior tilt. Right there, I don't even have to do anything. I don't have to do anything at all. I actually can just stand right there and feel the stretch. But then I want to kind of reach up in front of me. Why am I reaching up if I'm trying to stretch my hamstring? Because as I go down, I still want to be able to keep my upper back elongated here. Because what happens when we get posterior tilt? Everything rounds. You walk around like this. So we got to get elongation through here. So I'm here and I'm leaning up as I go. I swear I want to rip my fucking leg off. I'm going up here. I have tight hamstrings. Going up here and I can already feel the stretch. Again, we're stretching all the issues all at one time. But that's only if you're dealing with the ass knot condition. Because if you are an ass, don't stretch them. Do something else. Worry about strengthening them. Guys, I hope the differentiation was made here and made it clearly. As again, I made that other video about anterior pelvic tilt that a lot of guys found helpful, and you're going to want to see it because it's a common problem. But this differentiation, I kind of glanced over, and I want to make sure I went into it a little bit more in depth so you understand it. If you're looking for training programs that, that teach you how to do these things the right way so that you're not kind of left guessing, and you're figuring out, well, I guess I should stretch because the guy told me hamstring stretching is good. My hamstrings are tight. Stretch them. Not all the time. You stretch them when you're supposed to stretch them. You can find that over at athletenext.com in the Athletenext training system. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know. Ask or ask not. Doesn't really matter. You got to figure out what the right thing for you is to do. All right, guys, we'll be back here again in a few days. See ya.